moving back to direction, um, we have our line strainer. Uh, most jetters have this somewhere in the middle. You have to go find where to clean the line strainer or the filter. This is where the, uh, the water from the water tank is being filtered out so it's clean enough to go through the water pump. And I'm just going to show you right now. It's really simple to take off. I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to close off the valve, which we'll show you in an upcoming scene so that I won't empty out the water tank. I'll get some water out of here, but not a lot. Okay, cleaning your strainer is something you should do every day. Um, if you do it every week, you'll be farther ahead of many, many, many people that own jetters because it is one of the easiest things to service and one of the most ignored. So I really wanna stress this, and we've done this in other videos. You can see the strainer can has this filter in here. It's technically a strainer screen. And there's some debris in there. Those are shavings out of the tank when we did uh, drill the holes in the tank. So we want to make sure that's clear. If you see little pieces in there, you can take them out with your fingers. You can take uh, it to just a water source and just run water through it. You can open up the water here and rinse it out. Main point is make sure it's clean, okay? And also the bowl. You don't want to accidentally drop some fragments that you cleaned out of here inside the bowl because now they're past the screen and they're going to go straight to the pump. And then lastly, there's an O-ring seal here. You want to make sure this O-ring is in good condition. Um, might give it a little Vaseline every once in a while. And if it looks flat, it looks worn out, just replace it. It's a simple O-ring. Putting the strainer back together, you just press it in so it doesn't want to fall out. Thread it backwards till you feel it fall into place and just tighten it up hand tight. It will typically prime, but I like to leave it a little bit cracked. Open the valve up in the back and now it's priming itself. Again, just tighten it up hand tight and now you're ready to jet again. This is your exhaust extension. So naturally the engine would just exhaust out the side and most people, especially for a skid unit, but even with carts, like to load these up against a wall or a bulkhead, and we need to direct this exhaust out the door. So that's what this is for. It's also insulated, so you do want to leave a few inches of space between this exhaust and any kind of wall or bulkhead, okay? If you've got sensitive materials right here, there is going to be heat here, and especially down here where the exhaust comes out, anything around here could get hot. Okay, taking a side view of your Brute Jetter. Uh, if you have a gasoline powered model up on top, you're gonna have a small tool bin. That'll be where you'll find your nozzles and your nozzle extension and your manual. Okay, down here we've got oils to be concerned with. Right here is the pump oil level. And it should be at least up to that red dot. Um, it should also look kind of golden or clear. If this starts to look gray or milky, uh, it's probably time to replace the high pressure seals in your pump. And that's usually a few, several hundred hours down the road, but it's something to keep your eyes on, not just the level, but how that looks. And by the way, this is like 30 weight non-detergent, not motor oil, it's like a hydraulic oil, lubricating oil. Um, this is 8090 gear oil, and the level is checked on the other side, we'll get to that. And your engine is using a typical 10W30 or 10W40. Here's your fill point, this is a Honda IGX 800 engine. And this is the dipstick, they're gray. If you have our Kohler uh, CH749 engine or the propane, these are going to be yellow. And the oil filter on this model is over on the other side. So typical dipstick here, you would just lift out and check your oil levels, should be up close to this top dot. You can see the oil's real clean and clear. Oil should always look nice and clean. If it starts to be dark at all, you're probably well overdue for changing your oil. Um, oil change interval. Uh, the break-in is at about, if you're anywhere in that 30, 50, 30, 40, 50 hour range, it's time to change all three oils, engine, pump, and the transmission gearbox. Uh, and also change your oil filter on your engine. After that, it goes quite a ways. Uh, it's about 100 hours or so for your next oil change on your engine and you typically do not change the filter on the second change. You change it every other, the filter, the oil filter. Uh, and the pump and the gearbox can go like 300 hours. So these kind of things, you can watch your hour meter, certainly. 
I recommend you at least put them on some sort of calendar schedule. If you're jetting regularly, you might change your engine oil every quarter, and then say twice a year at the time change, change your pump oil, your gearbox oil, and your oil filter in the least. It's good to put them on a calendar and get those maintenances taken care of. Um, speaking of other lubrications, there aren't really too many. Uh, this is what we call the hose reel swivel up here. This allows, of course, the hose reel to turn while still receiving pressure. Um, you want to hit this with a, a simple spray lube every once in a while. Um, you might have a model that has a grease hook that takes a grease shot from a grease gun. Uh, most of the ones we're doing nowadays, though, just take a shot of some simple WD-40 or something to keep the seals in there lubricated. You can uncouple that quick disconnect like I showed you and just spray it right down in it and then just spin it around circles and that gives that a nice lube for you. Okay, over here on the other side of the brute jetter, let me point a few more things out for you. Uh, number one, here's that oil filter. Again, on the Honda, it's blue. If you have a Kohler, it's going to be yellow. And this is your high pressure pump. But lastly, here is the oil level for the gearbox transmission. And again, it should be about halfway up. So uh, the newer models now have a plug here where you just fill it until you see oil kind of spill out and then you put the plug back in. Uh, this should not consume oil, right? So as you go through your oil change intervals, you'll just be changing out that gear oil. So if you don't see a sight glass, don't be alarmed. The newer models, the brand new ones, have simply a plug here. But if you do see oil spilling out off the top of the gearbox, it just simply means that you overfilled it. It will spit out what it does not want. 